must admit I haven't. I'm probably one of the, the few that hasn't seen it or, or heard of it. Um, there has been a recent case in women's football in, in the English league, which has obviously been quite high profile with a player making animal noises towards another player, which is obviously disgraceful and unacceptable. But personally, I've never never seen or heard it myself, which I'm, I'm very grateful for. But, you know, obviously it's not to say that it doesn't happen. Yeah, I'm sure it hugely affects them. I, I was speaking to one of the girls here who's a teammate of, of the girl I was talking about, and she said it, she has really struggled with it because it's something that, you know, your skin colour, where you come from, your race, your religion, is something that is just part of you. It's nothing nothing good or bad about where you're from or anything. So for that to be used against you in a derogatory way it must be really heartbreaking in a sense because it's nothing you've done to hurt anyone. Um, and yeah, I know that she was struggling to come to terms with it, but I know she's had an awful lot of support from her close friends and family, as well as the wider women's football scene, because, you know, there was lots going on on social media and, and she had a, a hell of a lot of support, which I think she really appreciated. Yeah, I think we do. I think those examples are, are ones that have been made high profile, but I'm sure there's there's more going on sort of under the radar, if you like, that that doesn't necessarily get reported and, and I think that's where the problem lies is that these instances that may not be reported in the sense the person that's doing it is getting away with it or the people that are doing it and that's where the problem is if they're going to get away with it they're going to keep doing it so I think that the key is to react in the right way not necessarily retaliate and you know do anything you know an eye for an eye sort of thing but but to Keep yourself in check if you can and then report it to the right people and, and make sure people are aware that it's happening and the more awareness there is of it, is of it okay it, may, it makes it might make it look worse than, than perhaps it is if more people are reporting it but that's the only way that, that it's going to be overcome and I think it takes a lot of bravery to report things like that um, but I think it's important to know that the majority of people will, will be behind them and, and support them if they do feel the need to report something. I think, you know, especially if you're a young player playing in youth football, then obviously, depending on who it's come from, um, the first person I would think of is your coach or manager, parents, any adult that is in a position to understand where you're coming from um, and may then know the relevant authorities that need to go from there that that can take it further and take it, you know, make it into a legal matter or, or what have you. So. Anyone that you know of that is in, in, you know, authority or an older person that might understand it a bit more, I think it's important. And again, as I said before, don't be scared to do it. You can probably do it anonymously if necessary. You know, you know if it's been aimed at you, you can probably make it as if it's not been aimed at you, make it less personal, and that might be an easier way to deal with it. But as long as it's getting reported, I think that's the important thing. Yeah, I think education is probably the key thing here. I think you have to have a punishment that fits the crime. So an excessive ban or a fine is something that you would hope would put the person off. But unless they understand that what they're saying is wrong or what they're doing is wrong, then the chances that they may reoffend are probably higher. So I think as well as, you know, the physical fine or, or ban, you also need someone to teach them, look, this is this is not right, you can't say this, this is how you need to re react, you can't, you know, and, and educate them into, into what they're doing. Because a lot of people, I think, are maybe unintentionally racist um, or discriminating against someone, they don't realise what they're saying can be so offensive because they're not aware of what they're saying. And that's, that's probably the key thing for me, is to educate people as to, to what discrimination is um, so they know more about what they're saying and how it can affect other people. Yeah, I think so. And I think also, you know, it's one thing for a back player or a player of, of a different race or ethnicity to come out and say this is wrong. But for someone, you know, if, a, if someone's been racist against someone that's black, a white person coming out to defend that black person is probably quite powerful because it's almost in a sense of we're all sticking together. It's not just one race sticking to 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 themselves, that sort of thing. It's making sure everybody realises we're all in it together. Um, and the more people that can be shown, you know, to be against racism or discrimination, the better. Um, and as I said, it's a, it's a whole, it's a whole group mentality, not individuals, you know, only backing themselves.
he's been very brave in coming out and saying that because he's obviously a guy that's really in the public spotlight. A lot of attention is around him as a, as a young footballer who earns a lot of money, does very well at what he does, and he's at a very high-profile football club. Um, so for him to come out and say that, and, I, and I, I do think he's spot on, I think the way he's treated in comparison to maybe white players of the same age in the same position as him, I think there is a very big difference. And although the media would, would never admit that it's done intentionally, maybe it's just something, as I said, it, it's in their psyche for some reason. They're not intending to be racist, but it, but they have sort of pigeonholed certain players in certain ways. And yeah, again, that's that's probably about education and, you know, people that are training to be in media and journalism, perhaps that needs to be part of their training now, is to, is to make sure they're not stereotyping anybody you know, whether it's racism, sexism, homophobia, make sure that you're not pigeonholing people just because of what they look like or what they do or what sport they play. Um, so, yeah, I think he's really raised a, an issue that perhaps people weren't quite aware, as aware of before. But now, you know, the more you look at it, you think, yeah, he's got, he's got a good point. Yeah, it's a difficult one because you don't want... It's the same... So I can refer to something that I can relate to a bit more is... is you know, a woman trying to make way in, in a sports world is, is quite difficult at times. And you want to be given the opportunities, but you don't want to be given them as a gesture. So it's a real fine balance to make sure that everybody's got the same opportunities without making them think it's, well, I'm only going to let you have a chance because you are X, Y, Z. Um, and that's, that's a fine balance at the moment. I think the more opportunities that are given and taken by minority groups the better and the more normal it will become and the less of a token gesture it will be it's just up to those people to grab those opportunities and prove why they should be there however that opportunity has come around um so yeah it's a real fine balance between sort of patronizing but also not wanting to discount you know discount from someone from a, a particular role or job show racism the red card <laughs>